So in this video, we're going to add the same two functions that we added using a graphical method, except this time we're going to use our trigonometric formula. So we have two functions, 1.75 sine theta and 0 0.65 sine theta plus 25 degrees. And we're going to combine them such that a sine theta plus b sine theta plus alpha equals a new function with an amplitude r and a phase angle theta. So we're expecting the phase angle to change and we're expecting the amplitude to change. Now what we can see here is that a corresponds with the sine theta value when no phase angle is being applied. Therefore our a value is 1.75 and B corresponds with the function where there is a phase angle being applied. Therefore, 0.65 is our value of B, and we have our value of alpha of 25 degrees. Now, this time we can work in degrees because we're just going to be using our calculators. We're not reliant on Excel, which requires all angles to be input in radians. So we're going to work in degrees, but we're going to make sure that our calculator's in degrees mode rather than radians mode. So first of all, we're going to calculate r, which is the amplitude of the new function. And r equals the square root of a squared plus b squared plus 2ab cos of alpha. And it's the square root of all of that. This formula here has come from your equations and information sheet, so you have access to that. There's no need to memorise it. But our r value then, if we input those values, we've got the square root of a squared, 1.75 squared, plus b squared, which is 0.65 squared, plus 2 times 1.75 times 0.65 cos 25 degrees. Okay, so r equals the square root of, I'm just going to multiply all of that bracket out, however you could do this in one step on your calculators if you wish, and that bracket equals 5.54685 to five decimal places. I'm going to leave the full calculator answer in my calculator, and then I'm going to square root the answer. So I'm doing the square root of the answer on my calculator. Well, the square root of the answer gives me 2.355 to three decimal places. And if you recall using the graphical method, we got a value of 2.35. So we're very close except the actual answer rounds to 2.36 rather than 2.35. Okay, so next we're going to calculate the beta value, and we know from our equation sheets that beta equals sine to the minus 1 of b sine alpha over r. So if we input our values then, we have sine to the minus 1 of b, which is 0.65, sine of alpha, which is sine 25, and once again a reminder that we need our calculator in degrees mode, divided by our value of r, which we have here as 2.355. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my full calculator answer there to eliminate any rounding errors. So instead of 2.355 on the bottom of that fraction, my full calculator answer reads 2.355 175198. I'm just doing everything I can to eliminate any rounding errors. Now that's going to give me 6.698 degrees. Well, if you recall from the previous video, we expressed that final angle in radians. So therefore, to convert beta to radians, I'm going to need to use my conversion factor of times 2 pi over 360. So our conversion from degrees to radians is times 2 pi over 360. Now when I do that for our angle in degrees there, 6.698 times 2 pi over 360 gives me 0 0.12 radians. So 
So now we can define our final function, r sine theta plus beta. So our final function is 2.355 sine theta plus a theta value of 0 0.12 in radians. Or we could express it in degrees, 2.355 sine of theta plus We'll round that to 6.7 degrees. So it's important if we express it in degrees that we include the degrees symbol, otherwise it would be unclear whether the phase angle was being expressed in degrees or radians. Now what you've probably noticed is that we do have a slightly different phase angle here than what we achieved when we used the graphical method. When we used the graphical method, we achieved a phase angle of 0.08. Now, although they're slightly different, both of those answers would round to 0 0.1 to one decimal place. Now, if you recall, when we used the graphical method, we were limited because we only went up in theta values of 0 0.1. And when we tried to pick the point where it crossed the x-axis, we had to make an approximation. Therefore, this analytical method yields a more accurate answer than the graphical method, but we still have answers in the same order of magnitude.